Hello everyone, it's me Alex from America Designs. It's been such a long time since I made like a real proper video. I started a few, never really finished them. Um, it's been really busy. We had a baby, it's very cute. But instead of doing like uh, a, shop, a shop update once a year where, you know, stuff doesn't happen or it, it's weird, I thought I'd take you along with um, the process I did for uh, improving my CNC router. When I saw John Grimsmo make his Ultra router based on clear step motors and the tool changer and stuff like that, I was like, my router, router kind of sucks. And I make a lot of parts like this for the cases for my oyster knives. Um, and so it was like, okay, we're using it a lot. We bought the uh, WorkBee in 2019. So it might be logical to do an upgrade. And well, that still is, you know, building an upgrade because then I want a tool changer. Uh, you want a, a better machine like the Red Rick Stronghold Pro, which looks very nice. So that's two and a half thousand euros. Then you want like a good controller that can do the macros for tool changing, so that's another 2,000 euros. Then you want a tool changing spindle, that's another 2,000 euros. Then the red rig is bigger, so you need a bigger closure, that's another. And so it was 7,000 euros. But how much is that machine, uh, that machine actually running? You have to be realistic about that. Uh, and the reality is it's running three, four days a month. So there is a lot of time, but the problem is more that I have trouble getting it going instead of that the cycle time is very long. Uh, and that you can improve quite easily with a, a couple of things. So I usually come in in the morning, so it's now 8 o'clock. I start at 8.30, that's on that side of the building and I want to keep the machine running during my day. But Getting it going always took a bit of a hassle, and uh, yeah, let me show you what I what I did to easily get going in the morning and easily being able to get it uh, uh, running more quickly. So that is my old wood supply. I bought a lot of beams, uh, but they're all really really crooked, which is not per se a problem because you can plane them down. You know, it's beautiful wood, it's nicely spalded, but it takes it just takes a lot of planning and effort to get it up, set it up. And also, I always had troubles with bending, and my planer isn't that good either. But because it was bending so much, uh, you would uh, put a lot of time in the beam, get it flat, and then it just wasn't flat, and so you couldn't really stick it down. So instead, I'm using uh, bought wood, so this comes from Planke Centrale. It's it's great quality. It's very flat. It's uh, nicely sanded. So this saves a lot of time. Uh, other things that I have been tinkering on is my uh, saw because in the very very beginning I used to saw by hand. Then I went over to a different saw. A jigsaw, then I bought this one. But I was always still using these templates to um, do different sizes, and even that cost time. And then you would be marking with a pencil and then cutting. That's just, it wasn't very efficient. So now I have this uh, rail set up. You know, most of my products are uh, 21 uh, centimeters long. So just put it on mark the arrow and then you're done. Then you always have the correct size. And uh, this came from AliExpress and it was 15 euros or something like that. A euro is a dollar at the moment for uh, my American viewers. So that's really good. Uh, another thing I did was have this block and now I have power for one hour. Uh, and then also rewired everything that my dust collection is in there. And I also made a detachable dust collector with 3D print, of course. Uh, it, that just saves the amount of uh, cleaning up I have to do. So 
this really helped with uh, prepping stock really easily and getting things going. Because it's like what I said, I have uh, one hour in the morning to get things going uh, and I put everything in an Excel sheet and then I was like five minutes busy with prepping just something like a simple block of wood. Or I didn't have any material plane to the right depth at all. Uh, and then it would take me more time and more planning to have everything in stock. And so this now, really simple. I can just cut an entire beam in, 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 in minutes because setup is so easy and it's very accurate. Um, then we went to uh, the router itself. So it's a Duet 2 board controlled by the laptop. And uh, here I did a lot of things as well. Um, biggest difference is I had my old engineering laptop. So I bought this one in 2012 when I was still studying engineering. And it had quite decent specs, but it was very, very slow. Um, so what I did is I bought an SSD, put it in, set it over makes night and day difference. So instead of waiting 10 minutes for the laptop and then what to do Windows update because it's only on once or two, three, four time, uh, days uh, a month, now just boots up really quickly. Um, also automatically opens the uh, browser window so the duet is immediately ready to go. Um, I also did a software update on the Duet, which helps with, it was sort of losing its uh, zero point, so that wasn't really nice. Then I got rid of the MDF spoil board. I was noticing difference in height uh, because I was always using the tape and glue method, so painter's tape, glue, painter's tape, worked really well for work holding, but every time I pulled it out you sort of stretch the fibers of the, the MDF board. And at some point it was getting very uneven, so I had to level it a lot. And um, also it would go like this. It wasn't really great. So at first I started working on uh, this aluminium plate, which was my old fixture from the very good Silex 7. So this was very flat, just put it on there. Uh, and then I, I noticed better uh, stability and uh, flatness and rigidity, so it was awesome. This method where I, you have to put on the tape and then you have to glue and then you wait a second and it took time, especially when I come in from the day. So I, when, I have, when I take a lunch break, I go to the coffee machine and then sneak away secretly, go in here, and then load another block. But when I have to uh, wait for the glue to dry, um, it's taking more and more time. So uh, instead of doing that, I bought a vacuum fixture. It's really nice. Uh, so I have a vacuum grid here. You just put the block on there. Here I have a vacuum pump, uh, which uh, I bought. It's very noisy, but take this one out, that one out, and now it's rock solid. Turn that out, and now once again, you have a block. So for work holding, it works the same as the glue and the tape method, only it's instantaneously. Yes, it makes more noise, yes, it takes more power, but it's very, very quick. Uh, and with stuff like this, little upgrades like this, you really drive down the time that you need to uh, get the machine going. Booting is a lot quicker, uh, loading materials a lot quicker, prepping materials a lot quicker. And now I have a machine that I can run within five minutes. And this makes the bottleneck that production was uh, solved because I don't need a faster machine. I just need to run it more often. Uh, and so we keep on tinkering with, uh, with all the improvements and uh, ha have some ideas for the future. And then we can always buy a faster machine and just implement everything that we already improved. So 
that was a quick video uh, of what I have been up to um, in the past few months just to get things going because when you have a baby you don't always leave home at the time you used to leave home sometimes when you're ready to go and then you need to do another diaper I love it but I also love tinkering in my workshop so hopefully sooner next time and uh, we'll see you soon bye